I know it's even uh, stitched. Hey, Facebook, how you doing? It's look, it's embroidered. Like it's not even screen print. This is a giveaway. The Cardinals give away some good stuff. They this do. This is the Saturday jersey. It's called money. <laughs> yeah. Well, we just bought Facebook waiting for you here. We're getting ready to answer your listener questions. Um, but we're just talking here until you get here. Uh, so Ricky, it's, I'm, it's the pre-show. Maybe they had a flash sale for tickets at the Cardinals game. We're going and do you know the ATT rooftop, which is like right there in Ballpark Village at the top? Yeah. 50 buck tickets. And that's wow. all inclusive. You get to go to the museum, you get all the food, drinks, everything for 50 bucks and the tickets. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Because it was Star Wars night and they have they have Cardinal jerseys, but they're instead of a bat, it's a uh, lightsaber, but they're sold but, out. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. That's a bummer. Yeah. Because I was going to wear it to Disney. I was like, that'd be a good tie in. Cardinal. Yeah, it would be. Sold out. I love it. All right. Well, I hope people come in here because it looks like, oh, we got some. I was like, nobody likes us anymore. That was been- <laughs> They're done. That's They're right. Done. We put all those. You made a cool little graphic there, Ricky, today. That was, I still- no, that was Pam. If you check your email, you would notice that Pam sent that graphic out like what a week and a half ago. Pam, by the way, because I couldn't find that. I was looking all over for that thing you made that like collage. I couldn't find the message where you told me what. What do you use for that? Uh, it's what? A, it's a trade secret. We'll talk about it later. Yeah, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> so I'm sure. Okay. Oh, yeah, we don't really know that it's Google. No. It's, it's not. It's Pixelator or something. I don't know. Pixelator. Pixelmagician. Pixelmania. Hey, Lynn. Hey, Mickey. <laughs> no secrets. Everybody cover your ears because Ricky's going to tell, or Pam's going to tell me what it is. Everybody close your ears. I'm not telling. I know you're not. I'm just kidding. I know everything. It's my secret. Remember the, you know, there was like that laundry commercial where the dude was like, that's a secret. Whoa, 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 whoa. Anthony, I know that you're going on an awesome cruise because that's what I spent my day working on. We're going to, you're going to have a great cruise in next December. I know you got like seven years to wait until you get to sail, but we can't have the Cubs stuff in the chat room, man. I don't want to have to boot you the day. <laughs> Be careful there now. I love it. You're coming oh. to I gotta add that one to the list. Right, Sherry's here. Ashley's here, and oh, Ashley's in homecoming. Are you, you can't say that when it's dinner time. We're getting ready to record. That's not even right. Oh my gosh, Ashley, get all the drinks. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, oh, you gotta get that that squeeze bottle thing you got, Pam. Right? Yes, yes, yes. My daughter and my husband, both of them bought. If you buy that little, it, it's a squeeze bottle. It has a straw. If you buy it, I don't, and it wasn't that expensive. You get bucks. like the picture the other day. The test. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> you get it for that. And then they fill it like for a reduced price, you get more in it. Like the regular price that a regular drink would be only you get the bigger amount. And then anytime you're walking by, you can pop in and they'll fill it with iced tea or soda for free. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Right. So yeah. anyways, um, just a really cool thing. I love homecoming so much. I'm just going to say this. I just do. My family goes there and we just get the appetizers. Now they have two great appetizers. They have ham on a biscuit with bacon jam. And then they have um, like a little fried chicken thing on a biscuit. Mm. Hello. Mm. What else do you need? Mm. Mike, yep. you and your talk mm. about yeah, give me give me a homecoming any day. Well, yes. I would hope I get homecoming after we record every Monday night. If there was a homecoming down the street, the problem is there's just a Taco Bell down the street. There, there I, is a homecoming here, and I've been, I've actually went there recently. Although they have a ham bar, and it is not as good as uh, the, um, you know, the like the moonshine bar or whatever. But uh, <laughs> like, Shine they, is a great bar. They I mean, it, they, well, no, it's like you know, it's it's like a charcuterie board that they like give you, like you can buy. But, like, it's got weird pieces of, like, types of ham. So, like, ours had, I was not quite impressed with it the last time because it had, like, liverwurst on it. And uh, it's, they did it instead of, like, they, they were out of, like, salami. And I was like, oh, I don't really want liverwurst. But thanks yeah, for they have it. a board. It's called the Jasper's board. And it has ham <laughs> and pimento cheese. and it all, But it also has, like, smoked trout. Yes. That's a much better board than the one yeah. they have here. Because it was, oh, like, all different. ones are the bomb. It was just all different kinds of ham. And it was, like, some sort of, like, loaf. Like, I'm like, oh, I don't i don't Ham really loaf. want this. no it was like it was definitely like i know that they had like uh what did i say the whatever i just said it was gross uh <laughs> convinced ricky just likes to say the word charcuterie that's all i that's charcuterie all I'm- we we went to um we went to <laughs> ricky the word. i do we had the baseline cat tap house and got the charcuterie board there too it's good so, there too um, yeah. I didn't know it was good. we also got the the 
uh, steak puff. Don't get the steak puff. It was not very good. <laughs> Oh, I don't so trust gross. you after that crepe debacle. I'm just going to no, say. No, it's so gross. Even Brian said, um, this isn't very good. So it was like not great quality steak. It kind of tasted like a steakum. So I don't know. I didn't want to try it. I'm going to be like, be like this a liar. I loved it. Ricky's a liar. She's like, she's talking about. We should not have her do food reviews anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Why? <Quiet. laughs> <laughs> I see now uh, Nicole's typing. I couldn't even spell charcuterie. I couldn't get within 10 letters of spelling that right. There's no uh, way. It's <laughs> just fancy food, Mike. And Mike yeah, can pronounce it. And it's, I'm not saying like char cuttery or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. I'm not that fancy. It's just a board with junk on it. All right, here we it's go. Board with junk meat. on it. Lunch meat and cheese. Hello. It is. We, it, it, lunch know, meat when and I was cheese. In, when I was in high school. So do you know what budding ham is? Like you, you, I don't even know if they sell it anymore. But it used yes. to be. Yes, like, it was like ham and turkey, like sliced super thin. It was in like a, um, kind of like a pouch you'd rip open. You remember hey, that? Right? Eating my shoes. Or yes, is because they had to do schnooks. Yes. So what I would Can do I- is I'd take that and I'd take mayonnaise and like put on it and like roll it up into like little rolls and and I'd eat the whole. Oh, yeah. and then, like, oh, 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 dude, stop eating my shoes. Oh, when I speed skated, so I used to probably burn a bajillion calories. Yeah, you probably did, and all you were eating was protein. So, oh, man, that stuff was good. I just take it at Hellman's and put on there, and then roll up the ham and Hellman's. Roll. How about when we were doing the AP and they gave us those sandwiches and they had that Duke's mayonnaise? Did you use it? I think so. I it's had never all had over the place before. here in, in uh, I Atlanta. It's more of a southern thing, I think, it than is. it is here. But it was really good mayonnaise, I will say. I mean, I'm not like a mayonnaise aficionado, but we had a turkey sandwich and it needed a little was that the one? mayo. Was that on yeah, the, the bus when we were on the bus? We were like a minor league baseball team, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Everyone was so tired at that point. Everyone was like eating in silence and quickly and then passing out. Whatever, man. I was working for my guests on that bus. I had my laptop. My you iPod. fell asleep. I, 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 got my work, I got my work done first and I slept for like one. <laughs> Oh my gosh. We work the we work the agents hard during the AAP, I will say. It is it's exhausting, let's be honest. It is. Oh, seeing all yes. that stuff. Okay, here we go. Listener questions okay. first. Super summer survival spectacular or something. Okay. Something, whatever. Like We're not gonna have a nasty um anything like they did it. It's not gonna be awesome summer. <laughs> <laughs> spectacular right it's not gonna be that <laughs> no, it's okay here we go one third all right 1330 okay welcome to episode 1338 of the be our guest walt disney world trip planning podcast i'm your host mike rallman from be our guest podcast.com and magical mouse radio.com happy wednesday to you and thanks a big shout out to everybody who is joining us here live on facebook as we do each and every Monday night around 5.30 Eastern. We're so glad to have you here. So, uh, you know, if you if you are on summer break, I know a lot of teachers are getting out of school now this time of year. So come on by next Monday around 5.30 Eastern. Drop by uh, Facebook.com slash Be Our Guest Podcast. And we will be here answering your listener questions live. Of course, we take the questions from our inbox at, be our, uh, at Mike at Be Our Guest Podcast.com. So uh, send those in. Today, joining me today, we're going to not go to Ricky because she just dropped off. I don't know what happened. Maybe the cat uh, stepped on the wire. I, the cat was in the room. Who knows? Kitty. You get to be first tonight. So Pam Forrester Cohen or the Magic for Less Travel. What's up, Pam? I like being first. I don't get to be first very often. So um, yeah. happy summer. I got lots of emails from people who said they um, loved the poison rendition that we did during that one episode. <laughs> <laughs> we put that in people's mind we got them singing a little bell biv devoe on that so anyways that was funny and we'll have something else for this week because we're talking about summer yeah that's friday so stand by we've used it in the past you know it's a good song to just um, i sing it all the time in my head that's like what's going on as soon as i put the top down on the jeep that's what i'm rolling with you know what like that's nothing right. says like 44 year old guy in a jeep convertible rank <sighs> And, uh, you know, a little DJ Jazzy Jeff while you're cruising down Mid River Small Drive. That's Just- right. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> well, happy summer. Happy summer to the folks who are already in the midst of it. Uh, moms and dads who are staying home with the kids, hang in there. 
You only have a few more months to go. (laughs) Valerie has already been bored 17 times. She's been out of school for three days. It's ridiculous. (laughs) Yes. All right. She's back. I guess the, uh, hopefully she threw the cat out the window so that she doesn't uh, get kicked off the, uh, the feed here. Ricky's joining us from a Disney world after all.com touring plans.com and the mouse for less. Get rid of the cat, Ricky. What's going on? I have no idea what just happened. It wasn't the cat. It was just like all of a sudden my I saw the light go out for the, you know, for it being live. And I was like, what? Come so back towards weird. the light, Ricky. Come I know. Back. I need to come back towards the light. Uh, I don't know. Uh, that was weird. Uh, anyway, I want to send uh, a special shout out to Sean, who is recovering from uh, a pretty uh, big health scare. So shout out to Sean. Hope you feel better soon. So anyway, that's all I've got now that I'm actually here. <laughs> John, <laughs> hope you get better soon. All right, well, hey, let's get to the questions. Run a little late here, so let's jump in here with Debbie's question, top of the show, titled New Year's Eve at Epcot. Hi, Mike, Pam, and Ricky. I'm planning my first and probably only New Year's trip to Walt Disney World, and I need some help planning my dinner reservation in Epcot on the 31st. I remember hearing some of the World Showcase countries celebrate the New Year's based on midnight in their own time zones. Is this correct? If so, do you remember which countries? I would like to be able to schedule my meal around these times so I get to enjoy as many celebrations as possible. Thanks for all your good work with Give Kids the World. I hope to volunteer there sometime soon. TTFN, Debbie. And she's from her iPad. <laughs> she's not, I don't know where she's from. It's just, uh, from her iPad. So anyway, so Pam, walk us through what Epcot looks like on New Year's Eve because they do celebrate each country's New Year like in the different time zones, but not necessarily in that country. It's kind of during illuminations, correct? Yeah, so they do they do that. So here's what New Year's Eve is like at Epcot. First of all, take a bunch more people than you expected. Yeah. Shove, the, shove them all in there because they're all yes. in there. But it's still you can still walk around. That's the thing about it. It's a really fun and festive atmosphere. I love it personally. If I could experience every New Year's there, I would be there for it because it's just fun. Let's just face it. In most of our hometowns, they don't really have a huge celebration with thousands of people and fireworks. But the way that they celebrate is during illuminations, they have like a little New Year's tag and they sort of play a little song from each country and say, you know, our friends in Great Britain who experienced New Year's five hours ago or whatever. I'm not sure if that's the right time difference. So don't (laughs) hold me to that, folks. (laughs) But um, they'll play that and then they'll talk about that. And that's how they really celebrate it. Now, I know they may have little impromptu celebrations in the countries at the actual time that their New Year's Eve celebration goes on. But it's really not a big thing. And it's not even something that's on the time schedule or something Mm -hmm. that is really publicized. It would be very small if they did that. Not anything I would plan um, a dinner thing around. What you want to do is grab some kind of dinner reservation for the night that you'll be in Epcot. Because, dang, you will need it. Otherwise, you'll be waiting in a very long line at a a counter service location. Um, And you don't want to do that. So pick a, um, an ADR, grab your favorite location, um, make sure that you're out there in plenty of time to get a good spot to see the fireworks and enjoy, just enjoy being with people. I think that's the best thing about New Year's Eve and any holiday you're celebrating there. Everyone's in a great mood. There's this like feeling of brotherhood and peace and oh, it's just, it really is just though. It's like that. It's something that like you really just wouldn't experience watching, you know, Dick Clark's Rock and Neary. So you <laughs> definitely not <laughs> at it's, home that I can't no. stay up for at home. So <laughs> it's like a Disney version of being in Times Square basically is what it yeah. is, yep. it, what it is. And Pam makes a great point. You you need, I mean, this is a necessity. Is an ADR yes. at Epcot on New Year's yes. Eve. Not only do you, you need to eat and you get to avoid, with an ADR, you get to avoid standing in the miles long line of a yes. It's I'm no kidding. Bathrooms, you, if you know where to go, there's some hidden ones. <laughs> you know, there's, there's, there's places to go to the bathroom. You just got to be smart. Don't yeah. go to the popular ones. No. But I mean, especially for uh, eating. <laughs> just getting a counter service meal, A, you get off your feet, and plus, you get out of the madness for like an hour and a half to two hours, and you're eating good food, and then what happens is you come out, like, say, get get a reservation at like 7, you know what I'm saying, like 6.30, 7 o'clock, you get to come out into the madness at like 8.30 and 9, you're like refreshed, you got a full meal in your belly, you're ready to rock, you know, that is such a key, if you don't have that, it can be kind of miserable on New Year's Eve at Epcot, so Ricky, we've all been there on New Year's Eve the past few years, so what, what's your best advice for our, for Debbie here? 
Um, like you said, definitely make that ADR. I think it's going to be key. Um, and, you know, New Year's Eve is really, like you said, it's a totally different animal. Um, there are two uh, showings of illuminations. One is the um, the Peace on Earth tag. That's at like about 6.30. The second is, uh, of course, at midnight. Um, and the midnight one, you definitely don't want to miss. So it is just totally phenomenal. It brings tears to your eyes. It's so, so good. Um, but like I said, it's a different animal being there on New Year's Eve because there are dance parties everywhere. And it, the dragon in China. The dragon in China is phenomenal. Like it takes forever to fight your way into the China Pavilion to get, you know. I love it. I, it's I love so it. worth it. It's so worth fighting in because you're dancing and jamming along. And then all of a sudden the dragon breathes fire and you're just like, fire! And, and like, it's crazy just, yeah it's, it's awesome just the best yeah 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 um and then there's the dance party that happens in italy and there's usually a silent dance party that happens and mm-hmm. really uk's got a dance party we danced in all of them except yeah, italy, italy looked a little crazy like italy I'm- definitely looks intense i did go back <laughs> and like watched in italy because i was kind of curious as to what was going on because they had lasers think, and i don't think i don't think they let 40 year olds in italy no probably not probably that was definitely that seemed like a younger Mike friend. and i were big and yes it definitely <laughs> like a younger crowd um but it's so much it's so much fun make sure make sure make sure you make your fast passes too um that's going to be key as well if you uh, want any shot of writing anything that day uh make sure you make your fast passes at the i'm assuming probably 60 day mark if you're staying on site and or the strategy for mark. that yes is definitely make them in the evening when you're going to be in epcot look this is a day either get to a, a different park early and spend a little time in there and then leave during the middle of the day and make your fast passes for later in the evening or sleep in or do something relaxing in the morning yeah. and get to the parks much later. So. Yes. We, I mean, as a group, we we've done uh, New Year's Eve the last couple of years. And like what we did was we played mini golf the, on New Year's Eve oh. day. We went to the fountain. We just hung out around the boardwalk. And then we went in like at five o'clock and ate dinner at like six 30 at Teppanito. Yeah. It was the best way to do it ever. That was awesome. Yeah. Right. And we have a question in the chat room talking about someone who's going to be in Epcot on uh, the 4th of July. And again, that is the same kind of strategy. Just hotter. I would use for that. Yeah. Just yeah. hotter. Yeah. Right. That's the same kind of strategy I would use. So if you're going to be there in the evening for the fireworks and plan your uh, day to have your fast pass in the evening and also um, an ADR is key, like we said, and spend that morning by your pool. Just lay by the pool. And look I give you us. permission. We'll be there on the 4th of July at Epcot, so look for us. <laughs> yes. I will not. Are you not Come on no. now. No, no, sorry. I won't be there. That's not, not a done deal yet. We'll, we'll get you down there. Joe Lazo. I, I, I have a job that does not let we me. jobs <laughs> alone. My I boss is right a- there. Look, look, my boss is right here. <laughs> oh, wait, down here. I was finishing oh. the sentence. That it's said, like a Brady Bunch I, thing. I, I, I have a job that does not just let me take off and work from home. Like, it should let me take off and work from home, but they do not. They like it when I'm there. So <laughs> right, Let's get to the next question. we got one live in the chat, and I like this one from Jessica. She's just Star Wars with the recent announcement of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge possibly opening in late fall 2019. Do you think this means less crowds for September 2019 as people will be going later in the year hoping it will be open? We're planning a trip for September of 2019 and since we don't really care about Star Wars (gasps) I'm hoping we might luck out with some lighter crowds and possible Mm -hmm. promotions free dining fingers crossed. So Ricky look into your Mm -hmm. crystal ball. Okay Okay, got it. You know, because I think we were thinking Star Wars Summer 2019. Now it's pushed back a little bit. It's going to open right. on the West Coast. Right. What do you think about the scenario Jessica's posing here for, for folks that don't care about Star Wars and will go before? I, I, you know, uh, people like me. Um, No, I, I you know, <laughs> I will tolerate Star Wars land when it's there. It will be very pretty, kind of like Mike does with uh, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. It's going to be the same kind of feeling. It's like, oh, look how pretty it is. Okay. so Look at that, look at that kid barfing in the store window. <laughs> <laughs> I left true. a mark it's on true. me. I'm telling you. Anyway, it's true. It's true. <laughs> um, anyway, so you know, I think that we are probably going to see at Walt Disney World some lighter. I use that word loosely. Lighter-ish crowds, and probably in the in the fall, um, leading up to to Star Wars uh, Land, to Galaxy's Edge. Um, and for those who are asking when Galaxy's Edge is going to open, they announced it was late fall. 
I'm going to remind you very nicely that late fall does not end until December 21st. So <laughs> fall ends December 21st. So just very please keep fall. that in mind when they <laughs> and they specified late fall. So I'm thinking maybe maybe or late uh, uh, November. Definitely Star Wars Land, just somewhere in that range. So you might get it in November, but you, if you go in December, you're definitely, if you go at Christmas, you'll definitely get it. You'll be waiting with the masses because everybody else will be there then too. Um, but yeah, it's definitely going to be tight. And uh, yes, December is the end of late fall. Just letting you all know, December. <laughs> I'll be there. So. Opening week. That's it. Well, there's yeah. already a line. I, I heard uh, the line has already started, so. Be, yeah, I'm yeah, there. yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's it. All right. So Lorraine's got the next question. One of my great guests over at the Magic for Less. She says, My mom had a bad case of shingles a couple of years ago in her face and in her ear. It impacted her inner ear on one side and it took quite a while to recover as it impacted her balance. She is now completely recovered with the exception of a couple things. She tends to get off balance if she tries to walk on uneven areas like stepping on a curb or down from a curb or areas that are moving like an escalator. She's worried about getting on rides on our trip with moving water walkways like peter pan's flight but doesn't want to be left out of the fun if we're riding one of these rides and are up and are up to the front and ready to get on is it possible to tell the cast member of the issue and have them stop the moving platform to allow her to get on she's not going to want to be the center of attention having to do this but i don't know if we need to go the route of special access i can't think of the actual name or the das i guess um I know there ha there has to be some proof of issue for this and she could get a note from a doctor, but I don't know if she qualifies. Okay. So we, we get kind of the thing here. You don't have to have a note. Actually, they can't mm -hmm. take it. No, they can't take a note. Like HIPAA and their stuff, you know, yeah. uh, stuff like that. But um, Pam, what about this? I mean, I get it. You know, this is totally reasonable because she doesn't want to be the center of attention. Nobody does when you're getting on an attraction, but I mean, for her safety, she doesn't want to, you know, have a spill there on, on like a moving platform, say like a people mover or Peter Pan. So what's, what's best uh, way to go about this. So my best suggestion is when you get to the park, go there with your whole party and talk to them about the issues that your mom has to get a DAS pass or uh, disability assistance um, card. Um, you That's what you have to do. And what it is really is just all you need to do is explain how it would be challenging for your mom, explain the rides that they will be challenging. And the beauty of this is that Disney can best guide you into a solution for those. And we'll give you some input into that. Then also they'll probably tell you, you know, at different attractions, uh, the first cast member that you encounter, explain to them what's going on or whatever, and they'll be able to assist as well. That's really the best way that, to deal with it. And Disney's really come up with a good solution in that spot. You know, I know it's frustrating for some folks, but some folks who have like a mobility issue, the DAS really is not created for them anymore because Disney has made it so that most of their queues are accessible via wheelchair. So they mm -hmm. expect that folks that have a mobility issue will have a wheelchair, you know, to do this. But this is a different situation. And just explain what it is to them and they'll be able to best advise. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, next question. I love this. I'm going to the chat because... I love when families watch together. That is awesome. So here we go. It's Kaylee's question. Hi there. Watching with this with my 10 year old daughter, Abby, shout out, Abby, everybody. At What's up, Abby? Hi, Abby. She wants to know the best seafood on property. We'll be there at the end of August. Ricky, best seafood on property. Where do you go? I am going to, I'm going to steal everybody's. I'm going to say boathouse. I think that that is really, 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 really good seafood. I, I don't have an opinion because my I don't get seafood. You don't get seafood. I'm sorry. It's hard to pay for because my family doesn't like seafood, but I do. So sorry. Sorry. Like okay, go ahead, Pam. Um, I'm going to tell you Flying Fish, if you're looking for a signature experience, they have a great um, seafood. And there's a lot of the signature restaurants do. They always, you know, most of the signature, restaurant, signature restaurants will have a great seafood entree and a fish entree from which you can choose um they actually bid on those beautiful cuts of different fish be it grouper or halibut or tuna they do a great job with that and then if you're looking for something that might be a little more casual um cake may has yeah. crab legs and uh clams and mussels available and it's all you can eat and it's, it is all you can eat so mike's wife doesn't even like walking past there no. I know that mike's no. pam doesn't like that <laughs> mike wants to go in pam wants to run away we're just so gonna have to take mike pam we're just gonna have to take him yeah, we will have, 
take them. <laughs> we yeah. will. So anyways. Oh, you can eat crab legs. Yes, I'm in. So, but there's lots of places to get some good seafood. And I will give a shout out to, I know I mentioned this one almost every week, but Homecoming has a fantastic grouper. Um, they have a sandwich at lunch. Uh, and then they also have grouper over greens and dinner. Yum. So all good. So we're getting a lot of feedback in the chat. We appreciate that so very much. Thanks, everybody, for making the show interactive. We're getting the wave from a few folks. Uh, we're also getting seconds on Cape May Cafe. We're getting Columbia Harbor House as an option. Oh, yeah. Right there in the Magic Kingdom from Joe Laszlo and some guy named Scott Gardner saying Narcusis. Narcusis is good. And they have the uh, surf and turf that is the bomb. In fact, nice. I think... Last time we were there with Scott, I think we were there with a big group, and I think every one of us got the surf and turf. We were all like surf and turf it up. So that yummy lobster tail and the steak. Great. Nice. All right. So let's get a question here from London because it's probably getting a little late there. Scott Carrington's tuned in live from London. He says, We'll be traveling with our daughter seven, four, and one this summer. We have fast passes booked, but wondering about non fast pass character time schedules. Uh, when those will be updated, are there other random characters walking around or only those scheduled? So, Ricky, what do you know about like, uh, you know, getting the the non like stand in line like Winnie the Pooh or, you know, whatever Mickey Mouse? Uh, how about tell Scott about meeting the characters? So basically the the not like anything that is just the regular, like not the anything you have to make fast passes for. Right. So usually like we just did Chippendale this past weekend. So um or I guess last week, you know what I mean. Um, so basically how it works is uh, you'll see the characters, you'll see a line. Um, you can check the times guide. A lot of times the times guide, either the paper times guide or uh, my Disney experience will have it listed uh, the times the characters are appearing. So if you've got a character that you absolutely want to see, make sure you check the times guide to see kind of when and where they may be appearing at. Um, and then you just go and you stand in line and you wait for the character. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of how, how it works. Um, sometimes they will, uh, cut off the line. So keep that in mind. Uh, make sure you get there a little bit earlier than like the end of time because the line may be cut off and you may be out of luck. Um, and the other thing is, is sometimes the characters have to go away for a bite or whatever, uh, but they will come back in about five minutes after that. So uh, you just may have to wait a little bit longer just because the character has to go grab a snack. So Winnie the Pooh always has to go for like a bit of honey or something. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So uh, just keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's so fun to meet characters. There's also, uh, if there's a specific character that you're really looking to meet and you can't find them, uh, ask a cast member and they can assist you. Uh, they have a special line that they can call and uh, help help you find where that that character is actually going to be located perfect and let me just say joe lazlo knows us too well that's uh scary i'll say <laughs> so anyway kurt's got the next question i promised him this one, uh, that we get this one today now he put a picture in here so the picture is gigantic it's like wallpaper like i could wallpaper it's bigger than the banner that's in our basement this thing covers a whole wall so so bear with me because i have to go side to side here on because it made the email like real funky so he says mike i'm going to disney in july with my wife and kids 16th through the 23rd i booked nice. the celebration at the top appetizer drink event to watch the castle show at the magic kingdom for my wife and i the little bit i have seen online says it is very is a very expensive event for what it is have any of you done this event and is it worth the 99 dollars a person price tag the last time we went to disney in 2016 the whole family rented the boat for the magic kingdom fireworks show the night before our july 4th anniversary i was so disappointed that i spent about 500 dollars for this boat trip it was a huge waste of money don't want to make that same mistake again uh let's see here so oh the, the, the picture is a picture from the magic kingdom in 1973 a park map so that's what it's like oh, that's cool that's awesome. So Pam, do you know anything about this event? I, I don't know about it, but it's the, uh, the, uh, he calls it celebration at the top appetizer drink event. Yeah, I do. I just haven't been able to do it yet. I'm finally getting an opportunity to do the highway, the monorail dine around um, this summer, which I've been dying to do. Um, but this one sounds like a great event too. I just haven't had any personal experience. Um, you know, if you just want to see, you know, the fireworks from the California grill, you can just make a reservation at the California grill. If you're really worried about the expense and for $99 a person, you're absolutely going to get a good meal and some drinks there right. included with that. So that may be what you want to do. And the thing about the California grill is if you have a reservation anytime that day, so this could be for brunch, 
if it's a day where they offer brunch, or this could be for dinner, you can come back and watch the fireworks from their catwalks there for free. You just have to show your, um, mm-hmm. just have to show your ticket, your why receipt. Why was I yes. blanking on that word? <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> in my mind, they're just tickets, tickets, yes. tickets, tickets. So I don't know what a receipt means. So anyways, um, you can just show your receipt and they'll let you back up in that space. And it is a great place to watch the fireworks from. The issue I think that some people are surprised of is the angle from anywhere besides right there in the castle, the fireworks are a little to the right or the yeah. left, depending on where you're looking from. But it's a different view. It's an awesome view. Um, and you'll still enjoy it. So that's probably what I'd do. So I want to kind of share for those who don't know what Celebration at the Top is. Uh, we do have a page on the Mouse for Less. And what it is, is it's a private dining room, uh, which allows guests to enjoy beverages, alcohol included, and small sh- uh, snacks. It's $99 is per it, person. No, is, is it charcuterie? Uh, no, hang on, I'll get there. Uh, it's, yeah, I'm glad you pronounced it right for once. Um, it's $99 per person plus tax. Uh, it's only uh, offered on Sunday nights. Valley parking, uh, snacks, beverages, and the fireworks viewing are included in the price. Um, so what it is, is basically uh, you get snack size offerings. So it's not a full meal. Uh, it's flatbreads and sushis, as well as bite-sized desserts like fruit tarts and creme brulees. Uh, beverages offered include soda and non-alcoholic drinks as well as a selection of wines, beers, and cordials. Um, and uh, so here's my, I'm kind of, I'm kind of agree with Pam. My thought process is if you really want to see the fireworks for, and you're worried about being disappointed, um, I might just book the California grill by itself as a reservation. And then that way you can just have whatever you want uh, as your meal. And, and you don't have to worry about what they're providing you for these small, uh, you know, snack size offerings. Um, and then that way you guys are set. Like you already know, Hey, you know, we know we're going to have a good meal. We know we're going to, you know, instead, of, cause there's nothing worse than going to a meal and thinking or going to a dining experience like this and thinking, Oh yeah, I'm going to get like totally full out of this. And then you leave hungry too. So um, if you're really worried about it, I would maybe consider booking just the California girl. And we just ate, Steve and I just ate at California girl just a little bit ago. And I can tell you, we had a great meal, um, a great yeah. server. We were actually seated in there's sort of a, um, a private room. They used to call it like the wine cellar room before they did that. And it was open. They were actually sitting guests in there for dinner. And we sat there. It's actually not toward the fireworks at all. It's toward the other side. And we sat there during this torrential rainstorm and had the best meal. When we first sat there, I was sort of like, oh, shoot, I'm not even looking over at the Magic Kingdom. It's getting to the end of my trip. I'm like, you know how that kind of thing can snowball. Yeah. And I think one of your greatest resources you can take with you when you vacation is your ability to adapt and recover. And I was like, oh, no, this is not going to ruin my last night on vacation. <laughs> I am going to have the best night possible. And we did. We just really did. So the food was great. We just really enjoyed ourselves. So Always a good time there. Um, but yeah, really enjoy the California grill. And we did walk out when the fireworks were going on. So it was great. Good stuff. All right. Next up is Lisa Blanca in the chat. Let's get this one. My husband is a big Star Wars fan. So see, we had to do the yin to the yang, you know, like the, the non Star Wars. So they're big Star Wars fans. We're waiting to return to Walt Disney World until after Star Wars Land opens, Galaxy's Edge, along with the millions and millions of others. We have yes. also been to Walt Disney World twice. And they were both during low crowd times, the week before Thanksgiving and the week after. We absolutely love the short wait times during these lower crowd times. How long should we wait to plan a trip to see the new Star Wars land without absolutely <laughs> insane crowds? Uh, 23rd. Uh, yeah. uh, what month would we suggest? Our twin this boys- is it. Right now is your last <laughs> Yes, exactly. This is okay. it. I-, I hate to say this, but okay, here she goes. She says, my twin boys will be in kindergarten for the 2019-20 school year. Actually, she should she, she get this for them for a graduation present from college. Yes, that should be it. <laughs> Just kidding. Yes. Uh, Maybe the popularity will have died down just a tad. It won't. It won't. Thanks for the awesome podcast and advice and special thing. And she's one of my guests over at the Magic for Less, so I appreciate that very, very much. It helps make the show possible. But uh, realistically, I mean, this is where oh I, Star Wars Land is just a whole new beast. This is something that we it is going to be on the order of like Harry Potter was very popular when it opened at Universal. I mean, there were people waiting in line forever. I mean, but this is going to be times. I think it's going to be times ten, times a hundred. Pam, what do you think? And then Ricky, give your thoughts. I mean, I don't know how long you don't wait because this could never, the fervor could never die down, to be honest. 
And that's the beauty of, for as much criticism as FastPass Plus gets, I will also say it also makes trips like this possible. We are going to be at Hollywood Studios the day that that um, Toy Story Land opens. And the thing is, we're able to get, during our trip, we're able to get FastPass for both attractions on different things. And that's something I have in my pocket already. Like, mm-hmm. I don't have to worry, like, am I going to get to do Slinky Dog Dash? Am I going to get to do the alien saucers which i've shortened the name there to more <laughs> appropriate for the family um am i gonna get to do the alien saucers i you know i don't have to worry about that i know i'm going to get to do it and i know i'm going to be able to spend time in there and that's the other thing i will say even do- during pandora's opening there were people waiting two to three hours those were folks who did not have fast pass Yes. The folks that had fast pass arrangements were let right in. That it's was like, us. See you later. <laughs> like you have a VIP entrance to walk right in, but right. that's what fast pass makes possible. Yeah. And so that is one of the hugest benefits of that. So honestly, I wouldn't worry about whether I was going to be there the week it opened or two weeks after it opened or two months after it opened. I know that I'm going to be able to make fast pass plus reservations for that and be able to see that. Um, having said that, I think if you're really interested in having less crowds, one of the things that you'll want to do is just try to go during a time that's traditionally not as crowded and that will stay consistent throughout the year. Look at, and you don't need a crowd calendar. I'll give you the secret. Ready? Our kids off school. Oh, it's going to be more crowded. <laughs> That's it. It's really and truly. Is there some kind of holiday that's going to help it? That's going to, you know, deal, make the crowds larger as well. But, you know, those are the things that impact the crowds at Walt Disney World more than anything else are those factors there. So just go and enjoy. So, Ricky, what do you, I mean, I, Pam's exactly right on this, but Pam I mean, right. you just can't wait, right? I mean, uh, I, this, I, let, let's put it this way. I mean, we're a year into Pandora being open officially now and the wait for flight of passage is still ridiculously long. So, uh, as well as Navi river journey. Um, so, you know, that's, that's something to keep in mind is, is it really is going to be, I mean, if, if it's this crowded for Pandora, which is a movie based off of a movie that frankly, most people couldn't, care less about seen. i've never seen it right exactly um you know i mean if it's based off of you know something like that and it's got these kind of you know um crowds i can only imagine a year later how big the crowds are going to be for you know galaxy's edge because from everything i understand i mean you know a lot of people are talking about the millennium falcon attraction do you know the attraction where I think it's going to be at the the other one? Like from what I hear, that attraction is going to be incredible. So uh, that's what that you know so that's the one I think that's going to see the longest wait times is because I everything that I hear is that is going to take it to the next level. Um, so I'm very excited about that. But honestly, um, if you're looking for in, the, in that first year of when I think maybe you might be able to see lower lesser crowds it's going to be september of 2019 oh no wait no not 2019 2020 uh good good night oh my gosh <laughs> i'm already talking about 2020 I'll be retired by then you know <laughs> that's so crazy <laughs> um yeah i mean if you're really 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 looking to you know still get there in the first year but avoid crowds sort of like that september time i don't it's definitely not going to be i would i would have said like february but you know it opens at the end of the year in 2019 so February is still going to be ridiculously busy. So I, and all the way through summer. So I think September is going to be the first chance we get at seeing it with maybe not a lot of crowds, maybe, but I mean, that's still going to be ridiculous. So <laughs> here's the thing I learned this, this past couple of weeks. Okay. Because, and we'll leave the star Wars stuff. Cause again, we got lots of time to talk about this, but Dennis Keithley, one of our listeners, uh, one of my guests over at the magic for less uh, big support of the show always retweets when a new show comes out. I appreciate that so much, Dennis. He hosts a show that's a Star Wars fan podcast. Okay, so I knew this. It's called Scoundrels Sabers. Uh, I'm going to get it wrong, but just look for it. It's got three S's. It's, uh, Sabers, Scoundrels. I listened to it the other day when I was running. It was awesome. But the thing is, like, I had a question about, okay, because we, we all went to see Solo uh, over Memorial Day. I, I don't want to give any spoilers because pe- maybe people didn't see it. Yeah, not me. But So I had a question about it, about, like, the age of some of the characters, like, 
that's wrong. Like, how can that be? Because this person's that they would be different. So he explained it to me and I was, I was great. But here's the thing I found out. There is a, you know, we have our like Disney community with a bajillion. Oh my gosh. Yes. Websites. Star Wars might have more than the Disney community. Yes. For sure. Absolutely. Okay. So, and also what I found out was that there's, there's a huge actually retro community that like, like retro video games, like Nintendo's Atari's, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like retro toys. All those people are going to be going to, to, to the studios. We're not just fighting the Disney fans. No. We're fighting the Star Wars fans. We're fighting the retro fans. It is going to be just madness. I mean, because it's, you know, because I think a lot of things like we're talking about the narrowness of the Disney community, which is gigantic, by the way. This is like in so many other arms of other communities that are yep. just as passionate about as we are about Disney. They're as passionate about their thing and they're going to be there yep. with us. So it's going to be. Yeah. You know, Anyway. It's going to be insane, honestly. It's going to just, it's, yeah, it's going to be insane for the next few years. Just be, be, be ready. Be ready. Right. So we got a question. Then you, got the, then you got the 50th anniversary coming up, too. Yeah, so exactly. you're going to have in 2021. So that's going to be insanity even more. It's just going to be insane for the next like five years. Yeah. All right. So we, we got a first time listener, first time caller here, Mike Bankhead in the chat. Oh, we'll get to that question. We're going to bump him up to the top here. Never heard of him. No. Hey, friends and family got a travel question on July 15th. We're taking our son, Ben, who hasn't been to Walt Disney World since 1989. Ooh. His wife, Betsy, she hasn't been since 1985. That was a good year for the Cardinals. And our granddaughter, Sarah Jane, two years old. And this will be her inaugural trip. As I booked our ADRs, I didn't know whether to book. Four ADRs for the adults or five to include Sarah Jane. I think I've got some rides down with touring plans, but this dining thing is kind of uh, is kind of hanging our. I can't read it, but the, <laughs> so Sarah Jane is going to be two. So does he make ADRs, Pam, for four or five? How's that work? You make them for everyone in your party. It doesn't matter whether the child's a moment old. It just has to do with fire codes. They want to know the maximum number of folks there. And I know it is kind of confusing, but absolutely make them for everyone in the party. And you'll be golden. And Mike Bankhead is a planner of, I mean, he is seriously and truly. So he's going to plan this awesome vacation. In fact, sometimes I wish I could hand my vacations over right? <laughs> to someone who actually planned more than I did. I'm great with other people's vacation, not so hot with my own. But this year I did plan, didn't oh, I? My prom and give me a, props. We have a shared, uh, we have a shared doc in the, uh, do, oh my goodness. Really, it's awesome. Can I just can I just tell you? So I'll be down. Brian wants to take me down for my birthday, which is also in July. And um, he he told me a couple of days ago. He's like, so for your present, I I want to plan everything. I I want to I want to surprise you. I want to be Steve Forrester. And I was like, dear God, no! Like, don't. <laughs> I said you're not going to plan my trip. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Ricky won't even give it over to him. See. Part of sometimes Ricky doing that is accepting the gift that people want to I understand give, you know? that, but what if I don't want that gift? <laughs> you just have to be gracious. Give like Brian a chance. Sure. Maybe I'll let him plan one day and we'll see how it goes. And then <laughs> I'm, I'm texting Brian right now. All right, that's fine. Go ahead. I'm gonna tell Brian he can he can plan my next trip, and there I'm go. good with it. There you go. What if Steve gave him like an in service or something that might? <laughs> yes. If if Steve gave him tips, then yes, I'm fine with it. Yeah, probably better. So so Mark's in the chat. I appreciate it very much. Dennis's podcast, Long <laughs> Ships, Sabers, and Scoundrels. So check it out on iTunes. Very good listen because I the one I listened to they hadn't seen Solo yet, so I still. Fortunately, Dennis came right to me and, and answered some of my questions. So that was good. And Scott Gardner is my personal travel agent, like uh, Bankhead. So, <laughs> all right. Anyway, so here we go. A uh, question from Lindsay in the chat. Hi, guys. Love the podcast. We want to take a midday break and travel back to the Polynesian from the Animal Kingdom and return later to the Animal Kingdom for dinner and Rivers of Light. How much travel time should I allow each way? Are the buses that bad? Uber, Lyft, better? Thanks. All right, so Pam, I know you don't take the buses. <laughs> Uber and Lyft will definitely be a better option if you're looking for speed and convenience, right? It would be, but the thing I will say about traveling from park to a resort is 
I mean, it's just a straight shot. When you're going from resort to resort is where things get a little challenging. But especially from the Magic Kingdom, the buses are right there. The You walk out of the park, they're actually closer than mm-hmm. you'll be able to get an Uber or a Lyft from. So that's the one park where I see the advantages of using, you know, of using that. But if you do want to go faster, you want it to be right there, um, do Uber or Lyft. Just make sure you're clear on where the pickup is and know the vehicle that you're looking for, which both Uber the both the Uber and the Lyft apps do a good job with that. So just make sure you look at the um, license plate number. Just there you go. Trust me. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, no, it's just one of those things where so many people like I've seen, you know, those those like today show things where like people will get in random cars that they think are Ubers and they're not. So uh, just check the license plate. They share the license plate number with you. Make sure it's the right one. If you're watching the video, you got it. You got to, you got to like make the eye connection. Like when they pull up, you, you, cause you know what kind of car it's going to be. I don't look at the license plate, but I'm always like Steve. And he's like, Mike. And I'm like, let's roll. There you go. <laughs> let's go. I'm Mike or Steve. Let's do this. Let's let's, I gotta go. Okay. Next up, Amy's got a question. South Carolina in the house tonight. I just got to say two South Carolina questions back to back. Cause you know, Mike bank on South Carolina. Uh, Hi, this is from Traveler's Rest, South Carolina. I'm taking my four kids, 17, 15, 12, and 11. Man, those kids. Can you imagine what the food bill's got to be in that house for that four almost two? Oh, my goodness. Uh, In two weeks, we're staying at the Contemporary the first night before we move off-site. We'll be arriving around noon to just hang out at the resort. What do you guys recommend for that day? We plan on maybe some pool time and a hop over to the Poly. Love listening live, but now what do I listen to tomorrow? That's a tough question there, Amy. So Pam, what do you, they're going to, they're going to stay at the contemporary one night and then head off site. So we want to take advantage of the contemporary. What should they do? Oh man, there's a lot to do with the contemporary. It just is a really cool resort. You know, I just stayed there recently and kind of spoke about this on a recent podcast that I really, every time I fall, you stay at the contemporary, I sort of fall in love with it again. I, the room sizes are huge. The decor is really cool. I take advantage of some of the dining locations there. Um, if you want, I, I, I would understand if you don't want to eat a California grill with your crew, but maybe the wave, yeah. <laughs> the wave is a good choice too. It really is. Make sure that you are, you know, set aside some time there. If you're not going into the parks to watch the fireworks from that fourth floor area that they make available to guests to go outside and watch the fireworks from, it really is a cool view. And that's something to take advantage of. The contemporary also has two pools um, in addition to the, the pool that's available for um, deluxe villa guests. Um, And they're both kind of cool in their own, you know, unique way. Um, Love that. But I think, you know, one of the contemporaries greatest resources is the fact of it, its location. Not only is it just a mad or or just a walk or a monorail ride away from the magic kingdom, but you also have boat transportation to the wilderness lodge to um, Fort Wilderness, you could go and get a good meal at either of those locations as well. You have, of course, the very popular Whispering Canyon Buffet, Whispering Canyon Cafe, which mm-hmm. has an all-you-can-eat platter, not a buffet, <laughs> but it's buffet-like in that. Or, of course, Trails End and the hoop de doo Review over at Fort Wilderness. Just make sure you take advantage of being able to um, enjoy it. I, I totally get you. I feel like that's the way to be at the contemporary is just to enjoy the resort. So that's what I was going to say, you know, take a boat to Fort wilderness kind of explore. Cause you don't want to stay there all the time because you're staying at the contemporary. So swim there, take a, the environment of the contemporary, but go to trails in because that's, it's a buffet and it's one of the least expensive options on property. Everybody can eat till their heart's content, get stuffed. It's all good food. I love it over there. Kind of just walk around the campgrounds there, but get back to the contemporary swim, swim in your pool, go in the, Grand Canyon concourse, watch the monorail go by, shop, whatever. Ricky, anything else? I think I think that's all a good idea. So just enjoy the resort. It's a fantastic one. So um, you're going to have a great time. So much la- Last question of the day is from Sarah Fisher. It is for Ricky. She calls you out. So Ricky, I saw that. All right, question. Our family will be in Walt Disney World July 16th to the 23rd. The Magic Kingdom has a ticketed event listed mm-hmm. for the morning of the 22nd. Any ideas on if this is a special event ticket that allows guests to be in the park with limited number of people? If so, 
Where can you purchase these tickets? Should we dee, 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 dee. we rent it out <laughs> the magic <laughs> podcast listeners? No, no, definitely not. So it's the morning, it's the morning one, right? Because there are two events that, that take place. So it's the morning one she's talking about, right? That's right. Okay. So so the morning one is called Disney Early Morning Magic. And what that is, is it's uh, basically you get Fantasyland kind of to yourself. Uh, you get to ride uh, three attractions. They are the Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, and Peter Pan's Flight. You get to ride them to your heart's content uh, from the beginning of the uh, event, which is, I think, seven in the morning. Um, and then the event runs till 10 o'clock Um with that, in between that time, you also get a breakfast at Pinocchio's Village House. Uh, breakfast is available from 8.30 in the morning until 10 in the morning. Uh, so just keep that in mind, too. It takes, oh, it takes place from 7.45 until 8, until 10 o'clock. So if I had read further, I would have known that information. Uh, the cost is $69 per adult and $59 per child. Uh, in order to be able to purchase this, uh, Mike, do you know if you can purchase it? To, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that you can, or you can purchase it on the Disney website or by calling Disney too. Yeah, so. sure. This is the first I've heard of this event, to be honest. <laughs> Seriously? They've had it for a while. I know. No, I've heard of them doing it. I didn't know that the date that, so they're only doing it limited dates this summer is that what it is well, it's, so. they they only do it on sundays and tuesdays so it's not every day that they offer the uh and this is different than extra morning or extra magic hours in the morning this is totally different uh because extra magic hours is available for all park guests or all, all resort guests i should say um and you have free reign to ride you know all the attractions that are open during that Whereas this is available to all guests in general who would like to book this event, uh, the Disney Early Morning Magic event, um, and it's only Fantasyland that's open. It's and a you little don't different. This is Pinocchio's Village House. You do not get breakfast at Pinocchio's <laughs> Village House with extra magic hours. No, but you do get it with Early Morning Magic. And the the crazy thing is they have such similar names too, so it gets very confusing in the long run. Disney, you're killing us here. I know that I think they only have like three words they can use, you know, Disney, magic, morning. Uh, <laughs> Len, Len Tessa says it all the time. They copyrighted like four words and they just switch the orders. Fantasy. Uh, <laughs> wonder. <laughs> that's all they do. Yeah, no, uh, that's great. So uh, good stuff. All right. Well, that's going to do it for today's show. Don't forget today's episode brought to you by great folks like our friends over at virtualmickey.com, home of great iPhone apps like Disney edition. It's a free iOS app. Ricky, what are we reading? You probably just gave away something you could eat. <laughs> no, no, no. That actually was announced a long time ago. So that's not new news. Uh, but we do have some new news. And that is that an all new Disney Junior show is coming to Disney's Hollywood Studios this fall. Disney Junior Dance Party will be a live show experience featuring the most popular Disney Junior shows including Mickey and the Roadster Racers, Doc McStuffins, The Lion Guard, and Vampirina. I don't know how you pronounce that. Vampirina. I don't know. Uh, the new show will be a musically infused interactive concert hosted by Finn Fiesta and a DJ who is actually named DJ. Uh, it will involve guests in the fun, including live appearances uh, from some of your favorite characters, fun music from Disney Junior, and more. Uh, and unfortunately, to make way for this new show, Disney Junior Live on Stage will have its last performance on September 1st. Oh, so. no. The doubloons will be stopped falling from the ceiling. Oh, yes. man. So bye-bye, Disney Junior uh, Live on Stage. But hello, Disney Junior Dance Party. Good stuff. I don't know when that's opening, by the way, but I would assume it would be after September 1st because, you know, Disney Junior is taking place until September 1st. So, okay. yes. Yeah. Oh, they, well. they don't usher some out. <laughs> it's going away. Poor, like like Joe Lazel says, poor Handy Manny. And but yeah, I, you know, I'm pretty sure that Handy Manny uh, is, is well over. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, he has he, other stuff he has to work on. He does. Yeah, yeah he's he's working on uh the, the, Handy the, Manny is about 40 right now, I think. So. <laughs> <laughs> on his benefits by now is what's yeah, happening. Exactly. Anyway, all right. Well, that's gonna do it for today's show. Thanks again to virtualmickey.com for sponsoring today's show. Please support the show on Amazon, brguestpodcast.com slash Amazon. We do your online shopping there. Follow the show on the social media, Instagram and Twitter at Be Our Guest Mike and at Be Our Guest Pod. We've got a great Facebook page. You can go back and see the video from today's show. A lot of fun. We've got a little pre-show there and a lot of fun stuff in between the podcast. So check it out. Facebook.com slash Be Our Guest Podcast. 
And uh, that's about it. So we appreciate you downloading the show, streaming the show, and tuning in live. That means so much to us. We'll be back again on Friday. We're getting you ready for summer 2018. Lots of fun events. We're also talking about how to survive the heat on your summer vacation. So if you're going down anytime while it's going to be hot this summer, you need to tune in for Friday's podcast. All right. So for Ricky and Pam, I'm Mike. Wishing you a great Wednesday. Time to head back to work. And we'll see you real soon. All right. Got that one. Let me save it. Hello, Facebook. You guys were on fire tonight. Fire! Lots of good questions. Yeah, definitely. I, I wish we could get to them all. We just, you know, I know talks forever, and we can't answer them all. So I'm, not Hush. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't make me hit you the next time I see you. Edit. Wow. Edit. I'm so violent, right? A D I T E D. Okay. Okay. Oh no, I usually put not edit. Oh, well, that matter. Anyway. You had a sky pickup, which I got to go back and get at 12.11, but that's um, not Sorry. Don't, don't you mean the Disney Junior Fantasy Show of Enchanted Wonder? That's probably... Oh, that seems like that would be an interesting show. <laughs> the, the next three ships. <laughs> All right, so let's talk summer, summertime. Summertime. <laughs> I love that song. Let's just sit back and unwind. Here it is, a groove slightly transformed. Just a bit of a break from the norm. Something to break up all that monotony. Oh, a hardcore it. dance that has gotten to be a little bit <laughs> out of control. It's cool to dance, but how about a groove that suits your soul? Romance. <laughs> <laughs> he takes his car down for the car show. Okay. <laughs> Love that song. Man, that is the best summer song ever. It is. All right, Joe, have fun in Greece. Joe's headed to Greece. Safe flight. Bye, Joe. Enjoy Greece. Have fun. I believe Paige is in Ireland right now. That is crazy. I know. I just saw her post that she's getting wings and fries. I was like, Paige, they have she your is. food. They have your food. I left on Find My Friends. There's a Burger King right across the street. Of course. Uh-huh. She'll be eating every day. Okay, so. Yeah, she's no. A, she's in Galloway. It, it's cool. pronounced Galloway, but it's just G-A-L-W-A-Y. And she had to fly like all the way across Ireland, like Dublin's on the, the East Coast and Galloway's on the far West Coast. She had to fly all the way into Dublin and then take a bus all the way across the country to get back. All right. Well, Not the it. alternative is what? Like parachute out when she's above her. Right. Or what? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Right? <laughs> I'm Everyone who's going to <laughs> That's it. Galloway. Galloway. Right. Open in the door for two minutes. Jump out. The phone, she was almost funny. It was awesome. All right, let's do one, three, three. Going nine. to the barbecue starting at four. That's right. You got to get your new kicks or something. Your new shoes. <laughs> yes. Uh, got to get a short oh, set. Got to get a short <laughs> set. <laughs> got to get the short because there'll be girls there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, man. 1339. Here we go. Welcome to episode 1339 of the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World trip planning podcast i'm your host mike rallman from brguestpodcast.com and one of the agents over at the magic for less that's always standing by to make your next disney vacation great we are here to talk about summer down at walt disney world this summer 2018 lots of fun happenings going on but plus we're just going to get you ready for dealing with summer at walt disney world no matter what year it is because there are some tried and true tips to make your vacation better if you're going down during the hottest but most awesome time of the year, in my opinion. So joining me today to do just that, we have Ricky from a Disney World After All.com, touringplans.com, and the Mouse for Less. What's going on, Ricky? Um, I'm hoping that my Friday is much less eventful uh this weekend than last weekend was. Let's all I'll say. <laughs> oh, okay. I I was supposed to I was supposed to go to St. Louis last weekend uh, and uh, my flight got canceled. My seven o'clock flight got canceled at two o'clock. Uh, they tried to get me on a, a flight out of Atlanta at 415. I uh, for those who don't know, Atlanta traffic is terrible, obviously. Uh, and uh, I missed that flight. Uh, and, uh, so then they booked me on another flight in which I would have been stranded in Dallas. Uh, and I realized it while I was waiting in TSA. So then I had to go back up and tell them, Hey, I don't think I'm going to make my flight. Uh, and then, uh, they were like, no, you're not. And I was like, okay. So they re- rebooked me for this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> was that was that Friday night? Because that's when Paige was flying through Atlanta, and she they had to like amazing race it to hit their flight to Ireland because they connected through uh, Atlanta. 
Yes, Great. that was Friday night, and it was seriously the most intense thing. Uh, and then I had to wait an hour and a half for my luggage because I had checked my lug- luggage already. <sighs> Needless to say, Friday was very stressful last week. So no, it was stressful from here because I was like, I was like Mission Control because like I've never been out of the country except for like on cruises, you know, and that's right. out of the country when you're on a Disney cruise. So I've never been out of the country. Her mom's never been out of the country, but we're sending our kid out of the country, and she's freaking out because. Her plane was delayed like five hours getting out of St. Louis because the ground stopped in Atlanta. They wouldn't let anybody come in. And then her connecting flight got delayed a little, but they had like a, they had like a 10 minute overlap. Like you're not going to make 10 minutes, but then it got to, it was crazy. So yeah. I, oh I feel- my gosh. Yeah, yeah, it was terrible. So I said, uh, I went back to the counter and was like, can we just start over? Can I just rebook completely? So yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. This is terrible. This is terrible. All right. That's and that right. voice you just heard, Pam Forrester, co of the Magic for Less Travel. Happy Friday, Pam. It's the weekend. Happy Friday. Still love the weekends. Love my job, but I still love the weekends. I don't know. There's just something about looking forward to it. And I don't know that I necessarily work less on the weekends either. There's just a, like a mental right? attitude about it, I think. But I wanted to say um, we are running actually at the Magic for Less Travel. I know I don't. We don't typically do this, but I just wanted to tell you, we're running the ticket promotion for the month of June. Um, So I know, right? I'm not going to put all the deets out there, but just say, and if you're looking to purchase some tickets, hit up one of our agents there. Um, We have something going on, something a little special for tickets that we're selling in the month of June. Um, I wish you'd have told me because I would have got one of those signs like down by the ballpark that says I need tickets or I have tickets. (laughs) Who got tickets they, in Pittsburgh? Why do those folks have to have the worst grammar? He's always, there's always a few guys going, who, who need to, who got to? I oh, know that's what I'd have been totally doing. Cause they wear like a necklace around their neck with like a sign that says, I need tickets. I'd have that. And, and Mallory always asked me like, is he selling tickets or does he need tickets? I have to explain, explain the whole thing. Like, yes. It's like, so, yes. Uh, <laughs> oh. He I'm wants like, to buy your tickets for like a yeah. dollar and sell them for a hundred dollars. <laughs> yes. I'm like, Mallory, don't even worry about it. We use StubHub. <laughs> like we're good. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, let's so talk funny. about Walt Disney World. This is so funny though. Good point though. All right. So summer happening down at Walt Disney World. Ricky was down there to kind of kick it off yes. here for Memorial Day weekend. We had that. Sh- I'm testing that for myself. I'm just going to say, All Mike, right. you and I, we have a date with a crepe. I'm just going right. <laughs> to <laughs> Well, So Ricky, what we're going to do is though, go like kind of by park by park, just quick yes. over the things that are unique to this 2018 summer, because really Disney has made an effort to spice up the summer, to make it a little bit more fun, especially with the Incredibles 2 coming out here shortly. But not only that, they're bringing some characters out at Animal Kingdom. You know, they're doing some stuff at the Contemporary. Typhoon Lagoon's getting a little treatment. So, Ricky, walk us through some of the stuff. It's over at the Mouse for Less, but just take us park by park of what's going on. Even Disney Springs. Wait, wait. This is gonna. This summer's gonna be incredible. It like, is totally. <laughs> I'm calling it the insane summer just to be a little different, but it's, I it's- see. I see. Uh, well, I think Disney's calling it the incredible summer. So, um, so first things first, I missed the memo. Mike did miss the memo. Um, first things first, we have, I'll start with what I talked about last week. We have in uh, Tomorrowland, the incredible Tomorrowland Expo, where guests can uh, dance with the Incredibles. Um, There are, uh, it's like Comic-Con kind of experience. So there are fans of the Supers who are there walking around that you can interact with. There's, of course, delicious food. Um, And uh, there's also decor and music from the film uh, that is uh, all around you. And it makes great backdrops for folks. Photos as it I does. Said. It does. It you in the movies. If you are curious at all about what the uh, incredible Tomorrowland Expo is like, go visit the Mouse for Less's YouTube page, and I have a video up on there so you can see all about what it's like. Uh, plug anyway um so it's it's really it was a lot of fun and uh uh it runs through september 3rd so i talked about it ad nauseum last week so i don't know if you want to bring up anything in specific about it this week but that's kind of what's going on with the magic i just think it's it's a fun thing it's a cool thing to incorporate some of the incredibles in with tomorrowland i mean i think that theme fits so well and who doesn't like the Incredibles? I'm super Everyone excited. I'm super excited about the movie. I did not. So the Incredibles came out at a weird time for me in life. Like I wasn't in a Disney movies at the time because I was in college and, you know, I wasn't really feeling the whole Disney thing. Then I know, bless me. What what kind of person am I? Um, But so like I wasn't seeing Pixar movies at the time and stuff like that. But I've seen the Incredibles since then. And it's a great movie. And I actually, mm-hmm. Brian, I don't 
we had, I don't think Brian's ever seen it. And we actually started watching it on the cruise because they were playing it on the big funnel vision. And he's like, this actually looks like a really good movie. And I said, it is because I've it's seen it. So good. He hasn't. So um, I actually own it uh, from one of those uh, Disney movie anywhere like giveaways. Mm -hmm. So I we're definitely going to watch it before The Incredibles comes out. And it comes out June 15th for those. Who I don't know. know. And so it's surprisingly gonna... emotional. I will say that scene where Mrs. Incredible is in the plane with her two kids and the planes being um, fired upon because, you know, they're trying to get yes. into there. And she oh, realizes what she. What she I know, you're fine. I know. You're fine. You're fine. You Mike, you want to see it yet? It's... Dude, like, I choke up at that each time. It's mm -hmm. just a really. The, I think that you never expect your heart to be so touched by um, cartoon characters. But of course, Disney right. and Pixar always mean to do that. So, anyways, yeah, yeah. it's going to be fun. It's going to yes. be a fun yeah. time. I've seen Incredibles a bunch of times. It's one of my, I used to show it to my class all the time. Ah, <laughs> see, Mike's actually seen a Disney movie. Who'd have known? <laughs> but you know what? Here's, here's what, uh, off topic real quick, and then we'll get to what else is going on. But everybody says, Mrs. Incredible looks like my wife. Because they have the same. Yes. Tell yes, me that they do. Has that hair, yes, yeah. yes, she does. Yes, she does. I, I got a good looking wife. So she is Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I married way above my pay grade. So yes, you did. Yeah. <laughs> I did that. And, oh, happy anniversary to my wife. It's Sunday. See, look oh, at that. There you go. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, yes. So there you go. And uh, okay. So Ricky, so we talked about magic kingdom. Did you get it all or no? I, I, That's it. That's all they have right now. At the magic how about kingdom. Epcot? Epcot's got so, little gardens going on and uh, back in American gardens. <laughs> So Epcot, uh, it has not started yet. So we don't exactly know a hundred percent, uh, what it's going to tell. Actually it starts, uh, t it starts tomorrow. So yay. Uh, good tie in. Um, so it's going to be at the America Gardens Theater. The Guardians of the Galaxy are going to take the stage. And here, Star-Lord and Gamora are going to join an alien band and songs are going to be played from, uh, the hits from the awesome mixtapes one and two. Actually, this past weekend, Brian was listening to the awesome mixtape <laughs> so one. <laughs> so yeah. good. So, um, and the group is going to take uh, the stage five times a day. And it's from June 9th through August 19th. So it's not a very long stretch. Um, and it's going to be throughout the day. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure what to expect yet. I guess we'll find out this weekend. I guess we'll find out tomorrow. Um, it seems like an interesting concept, but well, I love the idea. Yeah. Apparently Star Lord is the most famous person from St. Charles other he than is. Who, who pitched for the White Sox. I thought Seriously, he when James Gunn <laughs> tweeted that Peter uh, Quill was from St. Charles, Missouri, I was like, what? <laughs> so I, I said, I know where that is. <laughs> I'm, always, I'm always looking for the guy when we check into Texas Roadhouse every Tuesday. Yeah, you know, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think Star Lord's gonna be at Texas Roadhouse. I'm just gonna throw that out there. But uh, I mean, if Chris, if Chris Pratt were there, oh, that would be a different story. <laughs> he's, a good guy, right? he's like he's a hero, not a villain, right? I just want to yeah, yeah, he's a hero. You, you definitely need to see Guardians. I think Guardians would be right up your alley, Mike. But that's just me because you're so into music that I really, th I really think that you would. Yeah, you should watch the first one and then the second. They're both good. They I are. Mean, they just are. They're very entertaining. So they're very entertaining. Is so. the music as good as rock, uh, yacht rock radio or whatever it is? <laughs> that's the question I have for you. A little LRB, a little LRB going on there, right? Yeah. Just say it. All right. So, all right. Moving on. Walking you home. All right. So we're gonna go to Animal Kingdom now. Uh, so in celebration of Disney's Animal Kingdom's 20th anniversary, uh, we had the premiere, which is this is being tied into the incredible uh, summer of the Up a Great Bird Adventure show. Uh, this new show premiered on uh, the actual grand open or the actual anniversary of uh, Disney's Animal Kingdom, which was April 22nd. And it stars Russell and Doug from the uh, Pixar film Up. And uh, basically, it's kind of, if you ever saw Flights of Wonder, it's kind of the same show, but adding Russell and Doug. We missed it uh, this past trip. Uh, so uh, hopefully I'll get to see it in July when I go down. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a bird show. So, um, you know, if you, you could add Russell and Doug to just about anything, then exactly. that would make it better. I mean, who doesn't want to go give Doug a big hug, right? But, but the old guy needs to be in there. He's the best. The Unfortunately, Mr. Fredrickson. Mr. Fredrickson is not in there. So That's an animal, I think, yeah, I <laughs> see. I think they should have had Kevin, I think Kevin would have been a really good addition because he's a bird. 
that makes sense right like or she's a bird i guess i should say so oh spoiler yeah, yeah. it's too obvious you don't want to go with the obvious no no why would you put the bird in the bird show i don't know i don't understand this logic um anyway so uh there's also the brand new uh donald dino bash which we had talked about as well uh that i missed out on seeing during the daytime but so what did you do when you were down there <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of food. Um, we were so, confused. So we're still confused about I, it, but it's, it's all good. The sad thing is, is I really haven't seen a lot of a lot of information about it either online. So all I know is that it's a lot of meet and greets. Uh, so you can meet uh, Chip and Dale dressed as dinosaurs, which are adorable. Uh, you can that meet Scrooge. That is awesome. Exactly. That is worth the plane ticket price. I, I'm a hundred percent with you. Is. I swear, I'm so looking forward to that. I don't meet a lot of characters. I'm going to stand in line for oh, a hundred percent. I mean, and Launchpad Mc, McDuck. Yes, Launchpad Hello, McDuck is going to be there. Pad. Yes, <laughs> and you've got Scrooge McDuck who's going to be there. Uh, Daisy is there as well. Pluto, Goofy. I'm not sure why they're there, uh, but they're going to have like dinosaur bandanas and stuff like that on. Um, so anyway, uh, you've got that. Uh, there's also some sort of dance party which was not taking place when I was there, mm -hmm. which I expected the dance party to take place at night, which is why I went at night and it was not taking place. So I guess the dance party takes place during the day. I don't know. Um, but anyway, well, so there's to see everybody else in the dance party at night. Yes. Yeah, well, but the, like, the characters aren't dancing. Lights. Yeah, and you need the dance parties are meant for dark. I'm telling you. Exactly. Like, the characters aren't dancing. Uh, yeah. They're just take, taking pictures with guests. So that happens during the day. And I thought that the, oh, like, okay. the I, dance, I thought that the dance party was going to happen at night because hello, it's a dance party. Um, but it, either it wasn't happening on the day that I was there, or uh, so they lied, uh, or <laughs> it was happening during the afternoon. I'm not entirely sure which one it is. I'm so. going to work on my dance moves so I'm ready for all these dance parties. I'm just saying. <laughs> The Cardinals do this move when they get on base, and it's by Marcelo Zuna. They do the dinosaur, like the little T Rex. They get the little, oh, little tiny arms. Yeah, so that's that's a move we're gonna do. We're down Please there. Please do that and have video of it. I beg you. I really want to see that. I will. With, yeah, what's his name? McQuack Quack. What's the Launchpad Launch Quack. Quack. Who? Launchpad Launch Launch Quack. Launch he sounds like somebody I would like. Is he a space guy? Yeah, he's he's a pilot. Oh, okay. Haven't you, well, haven't you ever seen DuckTales? He flies the air. Uh, no, you've no. never watched DuckTales? DuckTales. Duck was, like, was too old for DuckTales. DuckTales is like Ricky's generation, I think. Yeah, it's it is. It's like 10 years younger than me. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, yeah. Mike, life is like an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Here in Duckburg. <laughs> okay, go on to the next park. We got to keep rolling here because we got to give some survival Tips. Oh, okay. No more. Okay. Um, I think that the the biggest thing that's happening for those who didn't know, uh, Toy Story Land. Oh. And where are you? You're late. <laughs> You're late. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Toy Story Land is opening on June thirtieth. Uh, so it hasn't opened yet. Uh, it opens at the end of the month, and here guests are gonna get to ride Slinky Dog Dash, which is a family friendly coaster. Alien Swirling uh, Saucers, uh, which is kind of like Mater's Junkyard Jamboree, for those who have seen that attraction at Disneyland. Um, and then Toy Story Mania is going to be absorbed into the new land. Uh, and of course, we have talked at nauseam as well about Woody's Lunchbox, which sounds incredible, and I can't wait to eat all We're of all way too all excited food. about it. It's just all so good. <laughs> I swear, all I've been doing on my last Disney trips is just eating the food. And that sounds terrible, but it's so delicious. So. People are like, did you get Fast Pass for that? I'm like, yeah, oh. yeah, but we're going to go to Woody's Lunch yep. Bar. I got Fast Pass for my belly because that's all going <laughs> I'm just, I mean, they might as well just just bring me everything all at once and I'll just take my time and eat it all. <laughs> so I, I have a Woody's Lunchbox story from this past weekend. I know it's hard to believe, right? Because it's not open, but here's yes. what happened. So we went to the Cardinals game the day that Wong hit the home run to walk off. It was awesome. Got the jersey that day. Giveaway. Anyway, we get there early. It's raining. We always get there like right when the gates open. Watch of course you do. Because I'm ball, you know, I love baseball. Anyway, Pam and and uh, Mallory go to get some lunch because it's a one o'clock game. So they go in and I'm like walking around because there's players on the field and I'm trying to get autographs or something. So they didn't know what I wanted for lunch. Well, Pam has heard me talk about these tachos because I'm like obsessed with <laughs> I can't wait till Woody's Lunchbox opens. I'm going to get these things called tachos. Well, so at Bush Stadium, they sell this and uh, this is a warning. Okay, so it's in it's in a home plate box. It's like the shape of a home plate. I mean, it's big. It's almost the size of a home plate. It's big. Oh my gosh. Full of tater tots. 
they're called nach nacho tots or something so it's like it's like a whole like w- like when your mom used to make orida like yes on a big pan it's probably that many it's probably meant for a family <laughs> but i thought it was my lunch and they put <laughs> everything on it sour cream nacho cheese uh, meat uh, the little green onions all this I just sat there and just, just I ate them. I just ate these things. Oh my God. By the fifth inning, I thought I was happy. The it was too much. So I'm just saying, be careful when you have the tachos, I will be a victim of it. I'm promising you I'll probably get sick. But I'm just saying, eat your tachos. But Mike will do this again, by the way. Yes. He'll do the exact same thing again. He will not change course. He no, will still no, no. get the tachos. No. Yes. Anyway, so that's, this is a word of warning when Woody's lunchbox opens. Okay, so when you see Mike hurling on the <laughs> side of the, of the bushes, I mean, alien saucers like oh, it's not, it's the tachos. It's not. <laughs> so don't sit. Go ahead, go ahead, Rick. Oh my gosh! All right, so we also have Wine Bar George, which just opened up uh, at Disney Springs. <laughs> um, this was unfortunately one of the places that I did not get to this trip. Uh, I know what did I do? I really don't know what I did on my vacation. I didn't do anything. I was supposed on Ricky's to. vacation. She did stuff, but it wasn't any of this stuff. It wasn't any of the things that I went to. Completely about. different stuff. <laughs> you did the Magic Kingdom. You, you did a lot of that stuff. So I'll give you that. Yeah, that's all right, true. All right, all right. Yes, I did a lot of good hard work at the Magic Kingdom. Hey, I'm only one little person. I can't do it all. I'm just saying. Um, so anyway, so uh, yes, we have <laughs> we have the new wine bar, George, which looks fantastic. Lots of small plates, lots of wine. Wine if you're a wine fan. Uh, and there's also the basket at Wine Bar George, which we've talked about before, which is going to let you take a charcuterie board and go where you please, which I don't understand where you're going at in Disney Springs. The word the of the day board. is charcuterie. charcuterie. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, anyway. What's restaurant that's uh, getting close to opening, Ricky? Oh but- my gosh. Okay. So it's called Terralina Crafted Italian and mm-hmm. this poor restaurant <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad for it. It's actually, um, it's just a sister restaurant of Paddlefish. So that when I went to that event at Paddlefish, the the chef was actually kind of uh, talking about it because some people asked about it. Um, this poor restaurant, I don't know when it's going to open. They were they they seemed hopeful that it would be opening soon, uh, and uh, when when the chef did anyway. Um, so they seemed hopeful, but when I was there, the walls were still up. It looked like they were still working on the roof. Uh, so I don't know. It had a sign up finally for Terralina Crafted Italian, but uh, hopefully that thing opens by the end of summer because that sucker, I mean, what, it closed a year and a half ago at this point, and I, I don't know what they're doing in there uh, because I, I, it's not like they knocked down the building or anything like that. I, I know, but it needed a zhuzh okay. beyond Good. No, All right. Because we ate there soon before it was to close. And okay. I was like, um, okay. I mean, yeah, it just needed a zhuzh. So I think it's getting a major zhuzhing uh, because it it's still, it. it's Let's still just closed say it a, like, a year and a half later. So, I mean, I think what I'm happy to, it's getting that. I feel more was, confident in going knowing that it has taken think, so long. It was supposed to open in the fall of last year and then it got pushed to winter and then it got pushed to spring and now we're in summer. So, yeah, we're almost a year. After Maybe they have a, a, a concept that was so new and innovative that it was just like Yes. Boom. Um, we're so, excited about this. Yeah. I don't know. But anyway, that's supposed to open this summer. We'll see. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. Um, and then finally, we have uh, at Disney Typhoon Lagoon, it's going this to be Disney. Fun. It does. Disney Ace Chuo Glow Nights. And here, the Toy Story Pals are throwing a glow party uh, based off of the Pixar short. Party Saurus Rex. Uh, here, it's going to take place on select evenings in the summer, Thursdays, and Saturdays from June 21st till August 11th. It's going to take place from 8 p.m. until 11 p.m. And it's going to feature special lighting effects that will transform the park. Guests are invited to dance on the beach, play party games, and meet up with Buzz, Woody, and Jesse. And, of course, the water park attractions are going to be open. And seriously, this hard ticket event, not I'm, that much I'm money. I the price of this. I not mean, that seriously. much money. This is awesome. <laughs> It's $55 for adults and $50 for children. Seriously, that's not that bad. Um, so, Roman. Oh, we're doing this. I've already told you. We're doing this. Yes. Because I've been wanting to go. I haven't been to the water park since Paige was little. And this, oh this is like the push. Mallory's never been. You know, and yeah. so, like, you know, Buzz Lightyear, the, the Toy Story characters are my favorite anyway. But a glow party at Typhoon. And I love Typhoon Lagoon. I mean, in the heat of the this is going to be awesome. I, we're in. I mean, we're going. Why 
am I not traveling with you guys on vacation? <laughs> Why are you not? <laughs> Stupid job we discussed earlier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh so, yeah. for anyway no but so, seriously 55 dollars for adults yeah. and 50 dollars for children you get to be in the park from 8 p.m until 11 and yes. let's face it that's i mean you don't really want to be in a water park that much longer than no. that plus with all these special effects and stuff I am so excited about this. Just like ridiculously excited. And you know that Disney knows how to do this up well. So looking forward to that. I'm yeah. And jealous. it's a great way to get your feet wet with the water parks. Oh, hey. oh. there you go. Three dad hours. Joke. Hashtag I mean, dad joke. I haven't, uh, I haven't been smoked out by that big wave at Typhoon Lagoon in like a decade. So I got to get in the pool and be like, oh man, that still hurts when it's. <laughs> Good. Ridiculous. So we got did we, uh, had everything going on. Ricky? I mean, yeah. The only other thing we have that Disney is branding as part of the Disney Incredible Summer is the uh, new Pixar Play Zone, which is at the Contemporary Resort. And what that is is it's basically like uh, what guest experience on the Disney Cruise Line. It's an immersive Pixar character experience for children ages 4 to 12 that takes place nightly from 5 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. And it's it's taking place of the um, kids' clubs that are closing. Uh, it's kind of like a replacement for that. And guests will get to battle uh, Star Command and Space Ranger training. Uh, they'll get to learn ropes with Woody and Jesse, take part in the Piston Cup Challenge. Oh, and uh, Yep, yeah, sorry. Yeah, stop it. <laughs> and, uh, and dance with the Incredibles at the Incredible Dance Party. So, uh, yeah, it's $65 per child plus tax. Again, not a bad deal. Not for a bad deal. And a half hours plus it includes me. Dinner. Yes. So I think that that's awesome. So if you're looking for, you know, a romantic date night, uh, send your kid to the Pixar play zone. I think it's a good idea. <laughs> play. That's all we got. That's all we got for the summer. So that's all we know for the incredible summer this year. But it's good stuff. I mean, I'm excited it for it. it. It gives you an energy, which summer already has, but I mean, it's, it's a nice tie in with the new movie. So I'm excited to get down there and just take part in these things. A lot of them are included with your park admission. Most of them are, like you said, the Typhoon Lagoon thing, good value. I think it's a great way to, to just get over and explore Typhoon Lagoon and, you know, just the, the added kind of uh, uh, overlay of, of the night. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. So let, let's do this. We, we've done the show for over 10 years. So obviously we have talked about some of these tips for traveling in the summer, but we did yes. get a listener actually more than one his, his emailed us and sent us messages through social media. Like, you know, it's our first summer we're going down and we're worried because it's going to be so hot and there's, you know, it's schools out. There's going to be larger crowds. Some people are nervous about traveling in the summer and I've done it every year because I was a teacher. My wife still is. That was the only time I could really go. Pam, Ricky, you guys have been almost every summer and, and there's just certain things we've learned over the years. So we can't get into everything. You can go back. We have some shows in the, in the archives about, you know, the whole show is about you know, summer tips, traveling in the summer. But Pam, what would you say is like the one thing you need to really consider when you're going in the summer? Because it is a great time to visit. It's my favorite time to visit, to be honest. So anticipate that you're going to get hot and make sure that you don't get too hot. For me, like I can usually hang for quite a long time. And then once I hit that heat wall, it's out. Like pack it in, take me back to the hotel, put me in the pool. That's the only way that's going to be fixed. But if I stay ahead of it, and that includes like drinking water, I don't, in the summer, I don't care how much I have to pay for water and how often I have to buy it. Yeah, I'm sorry it, that way too. I drink yep. it and I'm happy. It keeps me happy. Also make sure that you um, take, just take breaks. And what that means is when you're outside for a big chunk of time, go in and do an attraction that's inside, do a show, uh, see the Tiki birds a hundred times on your magic kingdom day. It doesn't matter. You get to sit down, you get to be in air conditioning and you get to cool off. And it's that cooling off in between the heat that really makes it bearable and makes everyone a little happier and make a plan to sit down and have lunch or have a meal um, get a cold drink, get your feet up. It doesn't have to be a table service meal if you don't want that. But take, don't just eat on the run or don't be like, okay, we have 25 minutes to eat and then we're out. We have a fast pass. Take time to actually relax and really cool down. So those are, for me, the biggest tips. Make sure you do not get overheated. And I think so too, because, you know, as far as you don't even need an ADR. So say you're in the magic kingdom over the summer, we've done this many times together where we'll, you know, just grab something, say at Pecos bills, but we'll just linger in there for a little bit. You know, like you said, you're not scarfing down your meal, trying to get over to pirates. What you're doing is you're taking a leisurely meal, soaking in the air, you know, because you can, 
you know, you can just you can just make it kind of drawn out. And the thing about summer is this is what I tell everybody when they when they're questioning traveling in the summer is that it's a different mindset than going like in a September or say a February or like a May. Of course, the weather's not quite as hot then, but in the summer, the park hours are the longest you're going to get all year, except for that week between Christmas and New Year's. So the thing is, is each hour is, is you have more of a quantity of time to spend in the theme park. So if you go, my number one tip is go early, go as soon as the parks open it, the mornings, they're not as crowded for one thing, which makes it not as hot, but also you can get so much done between say eight and noon. You can get a ton done. And the thing I've learned is I've learned this over the past, you know, decade. I do not. And I, I've got caught in this a couple of times because I like, want to see festival of fantasy, you know, like at two or three o'clock, but I, I do not want to be in the theme parks between say one and five. I, I try to avoid that at all costs because it's just meltdown city with little kids that have hit their wall, but the parents are continuing to go on parents have hit their wall, but they don't want to, you know, it's, it's usually not pretty. I know some people can do it. I just can't because I'm staying on site in a Walt Disney world resort. So because of that, I'm paying, you know, a premium for that resort hotel room. So I want to make sure I go back and take advantage of the pool. I'll be honest. I go back and I take a nap. You guys know that. Cause if I don't take a nap, I am crabby at night. I, that place wears me out. He's Mr. Krabby pants. Oh, so not mr incredible that's, no, that's, why, that's why carl's my my spirit animal. <laughs> yes, this this is true. i'm a walker out in the evenings and i'm just like get out of my way but the thing is like you know you walt disney world is intense you know it's got sounds all the time you're you're constantly moving from one thing to the next you're mentally engaged all the time because you're thinking of what's a good choice to go here should i go to pirate should i go to tiki bird should i go to aladdin's magic carpets you know, you're always trying to make good decisions. You're you're dealing with your family, which maybe you don't have to do 24 seven back home. Seriously, you know? that's a, a, now that's a huge thing. Like you don't realize it, but you are dealing with your family 24 seven. And I don't deal with Brian 24 seven on a daily basis here. So the tensions can get higher. Uh, trust me when you're together 24 seven. It I is. Just, trust you know, me. You just, you have to be mentally on your game all the time. So I think, Stepping out of the theme parks is a great idea. Now you don't, here's the thing. Say that you, you know, you're staying at uh, all-star sports and you're at the magic kingdom. You can step out of the theme parks without going back to the hotel, go over to the Polynesian, chill out in the lobby, you know, the great ceremonial house, go to captain cooks and eat lunch there, go to the contemporary and eat at contempo cafe, take a boat over to wilderness lodge and eat at um, um, what's it called? Uh, roaring fork. You know, there, there's many ways to just chill. And like you said, Ricky, you, you do it many times. I've done this. I'll go sit in a rocker and take a 30 minute nap at the wilderness lodge and just boom, my attitude has changed because I'm refreshed. I've got AC. I feel better. I don't know. I just think you you have to get out of the parks during the hottest time of the day. I know you want to get, you know, as many hours as possible to get advantage of those tickets. But I think the thing you got to realize after a few trips is, you know, OK, say you're in the park for 16 hours and you say, well, I got 16 hours out of that day's worth of tickets. But was it enjoyable for the last five because you just pushed on and pushed on and pushed on? Right. I want to have quality hours instead of a high quantity of hours. That's kind of what I've learned. So, well, and that's the thing too. Don't look at time away from the parks as time that is wasted on your vacation. It's just getting people out of that mindset. Like your vacation is not about checking off boxes. It's about the experiences and the people that you get to share those experiences with. And if you're all miserable, even if you checked a hundred boxes off that day, what are you all going to remember about that trip? That you were miserable. Yeah. Go make memories. They don't all occur in the parks. And most of them don't, to be honest. I mean, we've, I, I just remember, like we were talking about on Wednesday, the New Year's Eve, you know, how we go about it and how we went and played putt putt at, um, Pantasia Gardens. And then we walked over to the Swan and Dolphin. We ate at the fountain because we'd never tried it. It's a walk up. And I just remember we, we all hung out there and, you know, that was New Year's Eve. So we had a great time bringing in the New Year together. We got great pictures in Epcot of all of us with our hats and our noisemakers. And, you know, at midnight, we're all, you know, hugging together and everything. That was a great memory. But what I still remember from that day was kind of the meal that we had at the fountain at like two o'clock in the afternoon, just sitting around having a good time. That was not on our list of anything really to do before we left. But it was a great time because we were just hanging out and we were just on vacation. So. Yes. That's okay. right. Tell Mallory, be ready for the handstand contest in the pool this summer. Oh, look out. We're ready. We're ready. All right, Ricky. So give us some tips. You've been down, you know, I just say, you know, just, yeah. just be flexible mm -hmm. and don't, don't just go metal to there, you know, pedal to the metal all the time. 
Yeah, and that's that's definitely good advice. Uh, but for those who are like me and who want to go pedal to the metal all the time, um, you know, I, I know I'm I'm one of the weirdos, uh, and I I do have trouble sometimes leaving the park. Uh, but what I've found is if I don't want to leave the park, I will find a spot in the park where I can just go and relax. Um, one of my favorite places to go do this is actually at Tom Sawyer Island. I will admit I'm very sad. It looks like they took my rockers off Tom Sawyer Island. Put the rockers back. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> so mad. Like, like it started with there was two rockers. And then this past weekend, and there were no rockers. And I'm like, where are my rockers? So anyway, uh, we did not go over there uh, this trip. But um, so hopefully they're just in a different location. But, um, you know, we'll go over there. We'll relax a little bit over on Tom Sawyer Island or we'll go, you know, in, in World Showcase a little bit and relax somewhere over there or, you know, just wherever. Um, I can't stress enough. Uh, there are places that are hotter than others. Traveling around World Showcase in the middle of the afternoon, probably not a fantastic idea with the sun just beaming down on you. Um, I will also say you can I'm one of the crazy people. I bring an umbrella with me and use it in the middle of the heat during the day to shield myself from the sun. Uh, but also it's kind of handy because inevitably there will be also the afternoon rainstorm. I'm one of the weirdos who don't like uh, the poncho. So I would much rather have the umbrella. So it serves double duty for me. Um, so just know the summer rainstorm is going to have, you can I hate the poncho. the poncho. I hate it so much. Um, summer rainstorms will happen by the way. Don't freak out. Don't worry about them. Uh, just go maybe grab a snack or whatever. If it, if it starts just torrential downpouring on you, gra grab something to eat real quick. And then usually by the time you're done grabbing a snack or whatever, the rains will start to dissipate. So you're good there too. It's not usually an all day event. So just kind of know that um, going into it. But if you really like the ponchos, I guess make sure you pack those too. Um, I always pack a little mini fan, which is handy when you're waiting in line uh, because sometimes the circulation is not moving in the line that you're waiting in. And, you know, it's, it's a lot to, you know, they always say it, when you move your, you know, the a paper fan back and forth, that's, that exerts more energy. So I always make sure I have one of the little portable mini fans with me. So that way I'm getting some sort of air moving around the face. Um, and I like Pam, uh, have also become a big proponent on, uh, now I will spend the money for a bottle of water, uh, as many times as I need it. Because let me tell you, there's something about that cold bottle of water when you yes. are just, walking around and just just drenched in sweat because it's so hot uh and it, it trust me it gets oppressively hot down there i mean and it doesn't taste like florida water and it does not taste like florida water either so um but you know i'm just a big become becoming a huge fan of just you know paying for the bottle of water and just dealing with it because it's it's just so so worth it you know and also um i will say that um at all the starbucks they have a uh container of water uh, usually on one of the counters in there so if you uh you know need a glass of water uh you can go in there you don't have to go up to the counter and order a glass of water at starbucks anymore you can just get your your cup of water from the, the little drinking fountain spout thing that they have on the counter and that's usually very handy as well. Um, and I've done that a few times. So it seems and like I'm, all of the Starbucks offer that now. I noticed it first at Animal Kingdom yeah. last year and, and now I'm noticing it all of them. So that's nice. I will say the one thing too that my family has started taking with us the past couple of years are those Contiga um, water bottles. We fill mm -hmm. them up completely with ice from the yeah, ice right. machine at the hotel before we leave the park. And then we have water bottles on us. And then of course, buy more water, water bottles throughout the day. Yes. Yeah, start with a good cup of water. Them, yeah. Yes. But filling that completely with ice at the very beginning really helps. Like you keep doing that. And then at different times we'll get ice from other places, but mm -hmm. that has helped us a lot of times too. Smart. And also what we've done again, we've talked about Amazon many times, but I will Amazon, uh, prime now they'll deliver you know 24 pack of water for you know mm -hmm. really really cheap and so we'll get a couple of those and just keep them in the room and we'll try to freeze them now some it's hit or miss with your your hotel yeah. uh, refrigerator whether it gets cold enough we've had some that can actually freeze the water bottles so 
if they freeze, it's really nice because what we'll do is we'll grab that because, again, the humidity and the heat, even when you walk out at, say, 8, 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning, that thing's kind of frozen. But by the time you get on the bus and, like, ride to the Magic Kingdom, by the time you get there, it's it's it started to melt. And so if you throw it in a backpack or something, it's almost like a little air conditioner on your back. And then, mm-hmm. you know, then you have water and it just defers the cost. I mean, I will the same way. I've learned, you know, I'm a tightwad, but I will buy water if like I'm going to go down because I'm so hot and getting dehydrated. But I just like to kind of hedge my bets where if I have a 24 pack of water in the room, that's 24 bottles of water that I don't have to buy. With four of us, they go quickly. Yeah. And also when you're at your hotel room, you know, you can drink one in the morning to kind of get yourself hy- hydrated without going down to the food court. It's just Which is very that, smart. like towels. People talk about, you know, freezing towels and putting them on your neck. That is something that if you, that's a tip that I've learned. Cause I have gotten overheated down there is that if you start to feel yourself getting a little bit in distress with you, you've kind of gone a little bit too far and you didn't kind of gauge it while you're a little dehydrated. If you can get towels, cold towels and put them on your neck, that is a quick way to kind of cool yourself down and kind of save, you know, if it's going the wrong way that can, that I've, that's helped me a lot. Pam, I know you've done that too, right? Yeah, we have we have that little Olaf towel. I mean, just getting it wet and putting. Oh, it you there. mean this one? <laughs> yes, the little Olaf towel. Yeah, the coolest summer ever. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, you just have to really be in touch with yourself. I mean, of course, you're going down the summer. You know, it's going to be hot. You you know, we all know that. Mm-hmm. But stay in touch with your body. Like after every attraction, or even if you have to set like an interval alarm on your phone to like once an hour or once every 45 minutes, check in with your family, see how everyone's doing. Let don't let people get hot and don't let people get thirsty and don't let people get crabby. Yes. Or hungry. Don't get hangry. Don't hungry. It, 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 yeah. Here's another thing that I learned too. And we talked about this years ago. We haven't talked about this probably for five years, but I called it the extra magic hours trap. And you can get into this so yes. in the summer. Okay. So what it is, you know, like my problem is I get sucked in by the resort TV. Like I love the channel. I watch Stacy, but I like the like PowerPoint channel that's got yes. off me. I love that background loop. <laughs> so I love, you know, all the park hours and all that. Mm-hmm. And I'm a sucker. Like if it says extra magic hours, I'm like, oh, I'm missing something. Like I, I'm a resort guest. I need to go to extra magic hours. So what happens is if you say you go to extra magic hours at Epcot, okay, till on a Tuesday night, you're like, I'm going to go to extra magic hours in the evening at Epcot till midnight. You're like, yes. Okay. So you do that. But then you see the next morning, oh, Magic Kingdom's got extra magic hours. And sometimes in the summer, they can be as early as 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. <laughs> And you're like, well, hey, I'm a resort guest. I got to go to those magic hours or magic hours too. If you do that, all of a sudden you have not gotten any sleep. Right. And you're just, you're going like a zombie because you're like, I got to get in all the extra magic hours. I call that the extra magic hour trap. And as fun as those are for an on-site guest, they can totally get you if you do a night one and then a morning one, then try to continue that pattern yes. for say a week because you yeah. have to get your rest. I know I sound like an old man and I am. I mean, you I are. get but, you know, and Matt Parrish is probably nodding along. He's in the chat with us, too, from uh, the 3028 there. We love having him in here. But, yeah, I mean, just one of those things like you is, again, it's a quantity versus quality thing. And I've been such a quantity person at one person at one point in my life that I'm like, I want to do every extra magic hour and I want to make sure that I get all my benefits. But you know what? Sometimes I've been at extra magic hours in the evening where I'm like, you know, if I stop and really ask myself, like, what am I doing? Like, Yes. I'm so tired. I'm a zombie walking around this park. Am I having fun? No, I'd rather be in the bed at the hotel. Um, yeah. Well, let me tell you, Scott Gardner and I will be your conscience. <laughs> Scott and I have no problem leaving the parks to go do something else. We're like, want to go have a good meal? Well, yes, I do. We're let's go. Or do let's go sit, let's go hang by the pool, or let's go do anything but be in the park with these millions of folks. And that's okay. You're gonna get that way, especially in the summer. It's totally okay to go enjoy your resort. Your pool becomes significantly more important in the summer. So think about that when you're making your resort choice. But do we all agree though that I mean I love going in the summer. I'm not down on it at all. Oh, no, absolutely. It's one of my favorite times to go. First of all, you have extended park hours, which make it fantastic. You have so much more time to be in the park. So even if you don't take advantage of every extra magic hour, Mike Rallman, you still have plenty of other hours in which to enjoy the park, right? 
So that's great. But I think too, they've done such a good job the last couple of years of having these special events that only take place during the summer. They aren't extending these into other parts of the year. You don't get an opportunity to do these things other than summer. And I love that too. Um, that's part of it. That's part of the fun of doing that. So I just wish they would have brought back that Pixar orchestra. I band. know that would have been a so perfect time. Good. In so, so good. Perfect. Uh, I know I was hoping they bring that back because I thought it could tie in with Incredibles, you know, maybe, you know, somehow. I don't no. know. One of my favorite things ever. Yep. So it was such a unique opportunity to do. I'm glad we got to see it. So it was cool. All right. Well, that's going to do it for uh, today. So thanks everybody for tuning in. We appreciate our Facebook live uh, folks that tuned in live. Thank you so much for downloading and streaming the show. Thank you to you and uh, drop by the Facebook group. What we're going to do over the weekend is I'm going to ask our audience. We've got thousands of listeners all over the world. What's your best tip? for traveling in the summer. Let's get a list going. Cause we have a lot of first time folks going down for the summer and they're a little nervous about, you know, taking on the heat and the crowds, you know what? It's doable. It's a lot of fun. It's my favorite time to go, but give your advice, give your best tip over at facebook.com slash be our guest podcast. Don't forget today's show brought to you by the great folks over at the magic for less travel. They are a platinum earmarked agency. They take care of their guests. They work so hard each and every day to make sure the guests are not only getting the best financial deal out there, but also just getting the most magic out of their trips ever. And we, we haven't talked about this, but one of the things when you book with the magic for less, which I think is very, very cool is that when you book your trip, you're going to get these tips from the time you, you place that deposit all the way up until the time you travel about every week or two, you're going to get a tip. Hey, you know what? Fast passes are coming up. Here's some great strategies for booking fast passes. Or, you know, what? we're, you know, we're about 190 days away from, uh, your trip, you know, you need to start thinking about some dining reservations. Here's some tips for getting great dining experiences for kids with characters, you know, what have you. It's, you know, tips for dealing with the weather. These little things are just, for one thing, anytime I get Disney emails, that's awesome because <laughs> it's not a bill and it's something fun to read. So, you know, what, you're going to get those and it connects you to that trip. Not only for the, the, you know, the three, four, seven days that you're there, but for the 200 days prior, you get a little magic in that inbox. And you know what? It's, it's kind of like getting a phone call where you see a 407 area code. You're like, yeah, baby, that's a 407 area code. I'm answering that one. It might be Mickey Mouse. So it's, it, it's the little things, but it, it really does make your trip more magical. So check them out today. Check them. You know, if you've never used a travel agent, check it out the first time. Just give it a try over at the magic for less.com. Let them know you heard about them here on the BR guest podcast. Also, please don't forget to support the show through the Amazon affiliate link. We appreciate that so much. Just click through BR guest podcast.com slash Amazon and give us a follow on the social media. We're on Instagram and Twitter at be our guest pod and at be our guest. Mike we will be lighting that up here in about a few weeks. When we get down there. I cannot wait. It's gonna be so much fun. All right, so we're going to get out of here for the weekend. Thank you again for your support of the show. We love it when you tune in. We couldn't do this without you, and we'll be back again on Monday with a great trip report to kick off another week. But let's don't worry about that now. Forget about Monday. It's the weekend. Let's have some fun. So for Pam and Ricky, I'm Mike. Wishing you an awesome weekend. Time to have some fun, but stay safe, and we'll see you real soon. Boom. Good stuff. Yay. Yeah, Joe saying the telemarketer should call me from the 407 you know what they're doing now the telemarketers they call from my area code and my yep. first numbers that's ridiculous absolutely oh. yeah yeah oh look what eric lane there found for us fresh prince performed super cala fragilistic oh that's awesome <laughs> I think mike's gonna play that now isn't he oh pam just disappeared because it's on top of her I, I can't because it's not linked in here. Oh, that's all right. We'll we'll play it later. Not as soon as we're done, I'm gonna copy and paste it. All Me right. Too. Oh, hey, fi chat room, you guys were on fire tonight. What up, chat? You're awesome. Great questions. Yes. You you make us look good. That's right. Thanks for making us look awesome. Oh, Ricky Skype's acting up again. Oh, chilling. Sorry. Did it once in each show, but it wasn't bad, so I'll fix it. Okay. All right. So I'll talk to you all later. All right, see you guys. All right, bye guys. See ya. See ya. Yes. Bye.